This is the second in a series of videos looking at decompression theory. In the first video I looked at half times. If you haven't yet seen that video I would recommend you watch that video first. You will be able to find the entire series of videos at my website using the link below goprocaribbean.com slash decotheory. In this video I'm going to be looking at compartments and then in further videos I will be looking at m values, the reason for the WXYZ rule and possibly most importantly navy tables versus the RDP in the PADI RDP exams you may well be asked a question to explain your understanding of the differences between the navy tables and the RDP and the only way you can fully understand the difference is to understand decompression theory involving half times compartments and m values compartments our bodies are made up of very multiple different tissues We've got muscle, we've got fat, we've got blood, we've got bone, spinal fluid, uh, our organs, our liver, etc, etc. All of these different tissues will absorb and release nitrogen at a different speed. Blood supply is the major factor in what speed a tissue might absorb or release nitrogen. So those tissues that have a very good supply of blood uh, will probably be tissues that absorb nitrogen fairly quickly or absorb gas fairly quickly tissues that have a very poor blood supply will absorb and release gas at a slower rate to develop the RDP it was impossible to think about every different type of tissue so the tissues were grouped into 14 different categories based on their speeds of absorption and these categories are what we mean by compartments so a compartment basically represents a grouping of tissues in the human body that absorb and release nitrogen at a similar speed the RDP was designed for recreational diving, diving that involved not exceeding the no decompression limit and given that premise they decided in developing it that we could safely use 14 different compartments in the decompression model to keep divers safe and avoid DCS. Different types of diving might require different compartments, a different number of compartments or compartments with different half times. These columns you should be familiar now with if you've watched my video on half times. These columns now represent something a little bit different. In my previous video the different columns represented different dive depths whereas now we're going to be using these columns to represent different compartments with different half times. So on the left we have a compartment that has a half time of five minutes. On the right we have a compartment that has a half time of ten minutes. If we watch how these might fill with nitrogen on a dive, what we see is that the five minute compartment is absorbing more nitrogen more quickly than the ten minute compartment is. After five minutes the five minute compartment would have absorbed half the total amount of nitrogen. So if this was a dive to 100 feet, after five minutes, the five minute compartment would have a nitrogen loading of 50 feet of seawater. The 10 minute compartment would have a nitrogen loading something below 50 feet of seawater. Now, there is a very big reason that I have not put an actual number there. Uh, it's not that important to understand it, but the relationship isn't actually linear, so we couldn't actually say that the 10 minute compartment would only have 25 feet of seawater. It would probably be close to that, but the actual number we couldn't really come up with. Let's watch another half time pass. So we have now done 10 minutes at a depth of 100 feet. So our five co minute compartment has do, done two half times and it would be at 75 feet of seawater nitrogen loading. Our 10 minute compartment has now done one half time so its nitrogen loading would be 50 feet of seawater. We can watch 
the nitrogen loading as another five minutes passes. So our five minute compartment has now done three half times and our 10 minute compartment is somewhere between one and two half times. Another five minutes has passed. We're on 20 minute dive time. Our five minute compartment would have 93.75 feet of seawater nitrogen loading. Our 10 minute compartment would only have 75 feet of seawater nitrogen loading. So our faster compartment, our five minute compartment, has more nitrogen in it than the slower compartment, the 10 minute compartment. As we watch it load again, we're approaching 25 minutes. We're on 25 minutes now. And now let's watch another five minutes pass. And we are now on 30 minutes, which if you've watched my video on half times, you would realize that the five minute compartment has now done six half times. So it would be in equilibrium, uh, or at least close enough to call it equilibrium. You would have 100 feet of seawater nitrogen loading in the five minute compartment. That compartment will not absorb any more nitrogen as time passes. It has reached equilibrium. But the 10 minute compartment would continue absorbing nitrogen or nitrogen would continue dissolving into it. After 35 minutes, it might be at this point. After 40 minutes, we would have 93.75 feet of seawater of nitrogen loading in the 10 minute compartment. After 50 minutes, we are starting to really slow down the rate of nitrogen that is dissolving into our body and between 50 and 60 minutes the rate of nitrogen dissolving into our body has become incredibly slow until after 60 minutes our 10 minute compartment has now done six half times it is also in equilibrium uh, or close enough to equilibrium to say that it has 100 feet of seawater nitrogen loading If we watch this happen again with a scale beside uh, and no actual pauses, this is how the nitrogen loading might look on two different compartments with two different half times, a five minute compartment and a 10 minute compartment on a dive to 100 feet. So looking to the left, looking at the five minute compartment, we can see it is getting very close to equilibrium. It's about to hit it. So that must be 30 minutes of dive time. On the right, our 10 minute compartment, even though we've gone over 30 minutes of dive time, it's still absorbing nitrogen. It has not yet done six half times, but the five minute compartment has stopped absorbing nitrogen. It's in equilibrium. Now we must be getting close to 60 minute dive time because we can see that that 10 minute compartment is close to equilibrium. It therefore must have done very close to 60 minutes there it is six half times and the 10 minute compartment is now in equilibrium at 100 feet let's ramp it up and let's look at five different compartments absorbing nitrogen on a dive to 100 feet we have uh, a subtle change in in the compartment half times i have chosen to use a five compartment model with a 10 minute half time, a 30 minute half time, a 60 minute half time, a 90 minute half time, and a 120 minute half time. Now what it's important to realize is that I've completely made this model up. This model would not work uh, to actually plan any kind of dives. It is completely random. The numbers have been chosen to make it easier to see what's going on. As we watch these different compartments load, after 30 minutes, this is what it might look like. The 30 minute compartment is on 50 feet of seawater nitrogen loading. It has done one half time and it is halfway. The other compartments nitrogen loading might look something like this. Let's watch another 30 minutes pass. So we are now on 60 minutes. Our 10 minute compartment has done six half times. It is in equilibrium at 100 feet and it will no longer be absorbing any more nitrogen. Now we'll let another 30 minutes pass. 90 minutes and if we glance at the 90 minute compartment we see that 
it has indeed just gone halfway. It has now absorbed 50 feet of seawater nitrogen. It is halfway between starting pressure and the depth of the dive. Hundred and twenty minutes, our one hundred and twenty minute compartment has now done one half time and is on fifty feet of seawater. Our sixty minute compartment has done two half times and is on seventy five feet of seawater. One hundred and fifty minutes. One hundred and eighty minutes and our thirty minute compartment has now done six half times and it is in equilibrium. It will no longer be absorbing any more gas or no more gas will be dissolving into it. But the slower compartments are still absorbing nitrogen to ten minutes and these slower compartments, the sixty, ninety and one hundred and twenty minute compartments are still absorbing nitrogen even after two hundred and forty minutes they are still slowly absorbing nitrogen. That's 270 minutes, and you can see that these slow compartments are now getting reasonably close to equilibrium. So the speed that these red bars are, are moving is getting slower and slower and slower. A combination of a slow half-time compartment and the fact that that compartment is getting very, very close to equilibrium. Our 60-minute compartment after 360 minutes has now done six half-times. It's in equilibrium. But even after 360 minutes, a 90 minute compartment would still have a little bit more nitrogen to absolve, absorb or dissolve into it, as would the 120 minute compartment. So that is how you see the half time of the compartment affecting the rate at which the nitrogen will be absorbed into it. So that covers compartments, a fairly quick video. We looked at half times in the first video. In this, the second video, we looked at compartments. Again, if you haven't looked at the one on half times, really important you look at that before looking at the third video, which is gonna start tying everything together. Everything's gonna start making sense when you watch the video on M values. And once you understand these three different things and how they interrelate to create decompression theory, you'll understand the reason for the WXYZ rule and the differences between the Navy tables and the RDP. Again, you can find all of these series of videos together at my website, goprocaribbean.com slash decotheory.